I'm Dave Dieterer. I'm from Seattle. Uh, I used to be a big rock star in a band called the Presidents of the United States of America, and now I work for a company that does, it's called Melodio. We have a bunch of products called Nutsy, N-U-T-S-I-E, which is iTunes moved around, right? Same letters. And we have a product that will move your iTunes from place to place on your mobile device or a web-connected PC. And then a bunch of other, you know, website, mobile apps stuff. That's what I do now. So I kind of am in this world of technology and music from both sides. Or more than both sides. Multiple. Four dimensions. I'm an artist. I'm a rights holder and label operator. I'm a startup executive. So I'm doing all these, seeing it from all these different perspectives. We had, were successful at the zenith of the prof profitability of the recorded music industry. The mid-90s was the time when you know, CDs had a higher margin than vinyl. Um, record companies were selling tons of back catalog reissued on CDs. So we really were in a great spot where this whole machine, very simple. It was a very simple business, perfectly vertically integrated, right? Product content comes in, goes up production, distribution, marketing, straight up the food chain, very everything controlled. And we benefited from that. You know, we sold, I don't know, five million copies of our first record worldwide through Sony Music. Very efficient, global, multinational, global marketing and distribution machine. So it's harder to do that now, and it's harder to sell five million records. So uh, on the one hand, we, you know, we really benefited from that in a way that not as many artists can benefit from now. If we were uh, at the same level now <coughs> and had a record at that same level as a global hit, we'd probably be lucky if we sold, including digital sales, a million album equivalents, including single track downloads worldwide, just because the market's not there anymore. It's, as, as many people have said on panels today, it's hard to compete with free, right? What can you do? You know, you could sit around and you could have a tantrum and scream and shout like Lars Ulrich from Metallica did around the Napster case, but you just look like a dipshit and you look stupid and out of touch and you are stupid and out of touch because you can't. These are huge global revolutions in technology. You know, artists, I don't think artists care. You know, it's interesting, the whole Napster um, file sharing, the first round in 2000 where, oh my God, this guy's falling, the music business is over. The people I knew who cared the least were the artists. They're just like, I don't give a shit. I mean, give the music away. We just have to, the only way out is through. So if you're an artist, you just have to, you have to be smart about how you use technology and run your business, but you have to have a whole other part of what you do where you stay true to what's in your heart and what you're trying to express and none of the other stuff matters when you're in that space creating or playing. Move them toward enlightenment is what art does, I think. Moves us toward, toward enlightenment, toward some kind of transcendent experience being out of ourselves. And the people will find a way to do that, whether it's going to a rave or listening to a Kanye song or going down to the farmer's market to hear some guy playing his acoustic blues. I, I, I just think, you know, it's wide open. No, because I've met, you know, people from the old school like Mick Jagger and Madonna. They're super smart, very sophisticated business people, and they would have figured out a way. You know, I, the, I could keep saying it, the cream rises to the top. The artists who are really successful long term are really talented at finding something inside themselves and finding a way to communicate it to other people, and they're also smart, they're hardworking, and they figure out what it needs. They're people who would be successful in any kind of work. It's it's same story, different day, and just another shitty day in paradise here in LA, right? Same people, same jive-ass motherfuckers trying to make a buck. The creative side doesn't get any more fun when you're a rock star, and in fact it gets less fun because you're spending more of your time doing press, doing other marketing activities, flying around from place to place. You have less time to space out and be creative or to record music or to jam with your friends. So for me, the more successful I got as on the business part of being a musician rather than on the artistic side, the more my creativity went into the business side. So it's where, it's where the fun is now. 
I don't know, you know, I still play music for fun. I don't need to be a rock star to play music for fun. So I like the action of trying to create a business around this amazing content. I think being a musician now is harder. Um, you, because it's, always, it's very, very hard work. I mean, even if you're very successful, you work, it's the hardest I've ever worked, 16, 18 hour days every day, day after day after day after day. And now, not only do you have to do the press, show up to do marketing things at radio stations, go do things with retailers, um, play the show, meet and greet with the people from your record company or other companies you work with. You also have to be Twittering every 45 minutes and you have to have a blog post every day and you have to keep up with all of your fan correspondence in all these multiple media channels. It, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, I, I'm glad we did it when we did it. It's just, the people really care about the music, right? That's what they ultimately care about. They don't give a shit about the technology, the consumers, the fans. They just want an easy way to enjoy music, so, um, and good music. So, in 80 years, people are not gonna be talking about iPhone apps, and nobody gives a shit, but people still will, as now, we still talk about Caruso. In 80 years, people will still talk about Michael Jackson because he created something that moved them and touched them here. So the, really the technology part is it's, it's not important. Uh, so if you can say anything about how digital technology has changed music, it's made it more, all elements are more random. What becomes popular is more random. How you market yourself is more random. How you build a fan base is more random because digital, digital period is, is random. It's a random, it's a, technology based on randomness, being able to move indiscriminately from one point in the media to another at any time. So it's a, it's a random world we live in, which I don't like. I'm a linear person. I like beginning, middle, end.